Welcome back to Let the Quran Speak. This is our question and answer session. If you have any questions, please visit our website at www.quranspeaks.com. Now, Brother Shabir, uh, we have a few questions here today. Um, the first one, we're talking about uh, the killing of apostates in Islam. It seems to be harsh and cruel. Uh, we've seen, uh, I mean, a couple of years ago we heard something of this. Basically, the idea is if somebody goes away from Islam, we are to kill him. Now, how does that, uh, how do we justify that in Islam? Well, although this has been a co very common ruling among the legal uh, doctors of the Islamic faith, I have not found this to be borne out by the Quranic text itself, and I'm not convinced, in fact, that this should be the Islamic rule, that you just simply automatically kill the apostate. Mm -hmm. It seems that uh, in ancient societies, uh, treason, or what you should, uh, you recently used to be called high treason, was considered to be a very significant crime. It uh, endangered uh, the political enterprise. It, it, it endangered basically the state and the safety of its citizens. Mm -hmm. And uh, for this reason, the person who committed treason was treated very harshly in general, whether due to faith or uh, regardless of faith uh, within Islam or outside of Islam. And so Muslim societies naturally adopted similar laws. They, they dealt very harshly with uh, the person who committed treason, which basically meant that the person went over to uh, display his loyalty toward the other side, which would mean that he would share all of the military secrets and so on with the other side. Mm -hmm. Now, because the, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, with his early band of followers, uh, became one group competing with all of the other groups uh, for survival in, in the region, and they were a beleaguered group threatened with decimation at any time from anyone who would dare to attack them, uh, the Muslims had to uh, also behave to a certain extent as a political entity, as a state, and uh, they had to protect their own borders and their citizens, and mm -hmm. this meant also that they had to have laws against treason which are similar to what was uh, in the international situation at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, some people apparently have, have confused this and thought of this in, in religious terms, and thought of it as a person leaving his religion, mm -hmm. uh, being so guilty as being deserving of death for the reason of leaving his religion. To me, it was not about that. It was a political act. It was the person who uh, committed treason against uh, the, the state uh, that was to be dealt with in that way. Of course, nowadays, we do not deal with people in this way because a person leaving one state to join another is not really committing uh, such a crime or posing such a, da a danger to the, the state that he has left. Now, there also often when you talk about it, you hear of the idea of mass exodus, that it was going to be a problem in Islam because there was a, a mass following that came all of a sudden and there are reports that they, have, they feared that people might uh, you know, stage a mass exodus so that people would turn away from Islam. Does that have any bearing on this? Are you referring to the uh, persons in Medina who at the time were saying let's toy with the faith by mm -hmm. becoming Muslims by morning and then uh, exactly. leave it by evening? Well, the Quran makes reference to this and the, the point of the Quran uh, here is that these people are doing this and what we can build from that is that if they were doing this right under, under the nose of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and he did not actually put them to death. In fact, they couldn't be doing this if he were killing apostates for the fact just simply that they're leaving the Islamic faith. He wasn't killing people just for the fact that they were leaving the Islamic state. Otherwise, people would not uh, use this ploy. What they were saying is that let's pretend to be Muslims in, in the early part of the day and then leave it at the end of the day to give the impression that we checked it out and it's no good mm -hmm. to turn other people away from the faith. Thank you, Brother Shabir. We're quickly running out of time. If you have any questions, please visit our website at www.quranspeaks.com. Until next week, Peace be with you.